Hello my viewers, this is Dr. Adeshina from a Future Teaching Physician Lectures. Today I would like to share with you some of the secrets that I use at the bedside that I learned from my residency training and also as an attending practicing in an emergency department setting. Now the secrets I'm going to tell you today are things that's going to make your life easier as a healthcare professional in your daily practice, making your patient feel better about the experience they gain from coming to your office or the emergency department and letting them walk away feeling like they were being taken care by their physician because this is a big problem uh, with patient care in medicine. So, rule number one, when you walk into the room to see your patient, knock on the door and the first thing you want to do is introduce yourself to the patient. Hi, my name is Dr. Adeshina, I'll be taking care of you today. Now. Pay attention to everybody in the room. If there's the mom, the dad, siblings, it does not matter. Even the child is one years old or a baby. Introduce yourself, shake everybody's hands, acknowledge their presence in the room. Patients really, really appreciate that. Rule number three, find any chair or even the garbage can. For example, in the emergency department, I will sit on the garbage can while I let every single person in the room have a chair to sit on. This creates an atmosphere that everybody is sitting at eye level, you with the patient and you with the family members to kind of give them the experience that you are actually listening to the patient. A lot of mistakes some healthcare professionals make is walking into the room, standing up at the bedside and talking down on the patient. Patients do not like this. The reason is because if you stand, and even if you spend 20 minutes standing up talking to the patient, it feels like you were not there. And studies have shown that patient's perception of their care, while a physician or a healthcare professional is standing in front of them, appears much, much shorter compared to sitting. For example, when you sit down at eye level and talk to your patient and explain to them, you know, ask them why they're here to take your history and do your physical exam, they have the perception that you were there longer, even if you're there for five minutes. It feels like you were there longer than that, and it's just a perception between standing and sitting. Standing sends the message to your patients that you're not listening and you're in a hurry. So please find anything you can sit on, even if you have to scrunch yourself at the bedside to get some space to listen to your patient. With that rolls into the next step, step number four, listen very carefully to your patients. Patients are gonna tell you a lot of information that are not relevant to what you need to know, but they're also gonna tell you what you need to know to make the diagnosis. Listen to the patient. Obviously, try to tailor your history taking uh, techniques to try to fit what they're trying to tell you and kind of filter out the things that you don't need to know, but it's very, very adamant that you're listening to what the patient is telling you because 99.99% of the time, the patient is gonna give you the answer to their diagnosis. Rule number five, you can stand up after you spend time taking history and you can start to listen to their heart, their lungs, do your proper physical exam while you're also conversing with the patient. I do this all the time. I'm taking, you know, I've already sat down, talked to the patient, stand up to listen to the heart, the lungs, examine whatever part of the body is hurting, and then ask, you know, ask further questions along. What's your allergies? Do you have any other medical problems? Do you have any history of any surgical problems? Uh, and then you can kind of tailor things as you go along. Now, the next step, once you have actually finished your history and physical, you've gathered the information from the patient, tell the patient what you are gonna do. So I, I always tell my patients, I am going to order a CBC, a basic metabolic panel. Now, the patient is not gonna understand most of the time what a CBC is, but you can generally tell them, I'm gonna get some lab work. You came in here today complaining of fever, coughing, shortness of breath. I suspect this might be a pneumonia, I'm going to obtain a chest x-ray so we can look at your lungs for any signs of infection. I'm going to give you some antibiotics if you do have an infection, okay, 
I'll get some lab work, you know, to see to make sure that you don't have sepsis, for example. And then if you're uncomfortable, you're really, really short of breath, you're wheezing, I'm going to give you a breathing treatment so you can feel better. Do you have any questions? Now, this is the time for the patients to be able to ask you their own questions and say, sure, I have a question for you, doctor, or I don't have any questions. Also, give an opportunity for the patient's family in the room and ask them, do they have questions and do they understand the plan of action? Do not just walk out of the room without telling your patients what you are going to do. Now, after you've done that, this applies to me in the emergency department. Once their labs are back, I go back, before their labs are back, if they're in pain, I give them some pain medicines. I go back in the room and reassess them frequently. Mrs. Jones, how's your pain? Well, my, my chest pain is better. Oh, that's great. Or, Doc, I need more pain medications. I will order some more pain medications for you. Reassessing your patient frequently gets, lets you know what their clinical status is. If they're deteriorating, that's how you know. Obviously, your nurse is also going to give you feedback to let you know if, your nurse, if the patient is getting worse or better. The next step is once their labs are back, go to the room with their lab result, a copy of their lab result, x-rays, CAT scans. And this is what I do. I print everything out. I go into the room again, sitting down at the bedside, remember, and talking to them eyeball to eyeball, telling them what the diagnosis that I found so far, what antibiotics, what treatment they're going to go home with, I will tell them, and who to follow up with. You need to follow up with an orthopedic doctor. You broke a bone. Now, when you are telling your patients, always assume they don't know what you're talking about in terms of medical jargons. You are trained to use a lot of medical jargons. Your patients are not, okay? They're the average people living their lives and they're not healthcare trained. Try to use simple words, okay? If a patient has pneumonia, ma'am, you have a pneumonia. It's a bacteria infection, basically a bug that it's in your lungs is making you sick. That's why you're having fevers, you're having trouble breathing and coughing those yucky stuff up. They can relate to yucky stuff that's saying mycopurulent, uh, uh, a productive cough. They don't understand that. Now, some of your patients could be healthcare professionals or they have some medical background, but always assume they don't so you can give them a better understanding of their disease process. Ma'am, you have something called appendicitis. And I said, do you know what that is? No, doc, I don't know what that is. Excellent. Well, your appendix is this little piece of your bowel that's hanging up on the right side of your body and sometimes stool, poop, gets stuck in it. And then when it gets stuck, it gets hardened and gets inflamed and infected. You have an infection and you need an operation to take that little piece out. You really don't need it in the first place. Your patient will be much more adamant and be much more satisfied with the care they get if you're able to explain in simple details of why or what is causing their problems. And if you don't know what's causing their problems, tell them, ma'am, I do not know why what you have but I have done my test to rule out things that I thought it could be. I would like to refer you to our specialist to do a further investigation. At the end of your care, shake your patient's hand, shake the family member's hands, and ask them if they have any further questions. And thank them for coming to visit you in the hospital or in your office. This is going to make your patient's experience better. They're going to feel more connected to you. And I have one extra secret that I'm going to tell you today. If you have the time, try to incorporate and ask your patients something that is not related to their care. What, what do you mean by that? Well, this is it. If you ask your patients, do you have a dog? They will be much more excited to talk about their dog than their abdominal pain. Not that they don't care about it, but if you try to relate something that is non-medical, like their children, their home, like their parents, their job. Simple things like that will facilitate the doc to patient relationship because they're like, oh, my doctor really cares about my dog. They want to show you pictures of their dog. They want to show you pictures of their, you know, what kind of job they do. So make it a habit of asking patients like, what do you do for a living? You might have an experience. Let's say you used to be a caterer and your, nurse, your, your patient happens to be a caterer. You're like, I used to be a caterer and you know, it breaks that uh, monotony of just retrieving medical information.
okay and the patient walks away feeling like they learned something new and if you have something else else to share with your patients you know that is not confidential things they can learn in life share with them if you have a young child that's in the room that's looking up to you and you're the doc in the room the nurse practitioner you're the nurse in the room you're the tech in the room and they're looking up to you and you say hey what do you want to do when you grow up well i want to be a nurse well guess what that's an opportunity for you to also tell them hey listen you can do it motivate them they will be much more satisfied all right those are the doctor additional secrets of becoming a better clinician and making patient care experience a wonderful experience i hope you guys enjoy this if you uh, really enjoy this video please feel free to subscribe to my channel just click at the bottom here and click subscribe thank you for watching have a nice day bye bye Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned a lot. Are you studying for the USMLE Step 1 or Step 2? Are you studying for the NCLEX or you're currently in nursing school as a nursing student? Are you a PA student currently in school or studying for your PANS exam? Or are you a nurse practitioner student or trying to take your MP board exam? Listen, I've got super awesome content for you. If you truly love this video and it simplified your learning process, I want you to check out my website below. I've listed all the list of exams, whether you're studying for any of this board exam, and all I want you to do is click on the link right now below so that you can take you directly to my website. For USMLE, just go to smashusmle.com. For NCLEX, go to crushnclex.com. And if you're studying for the PANS exam, the nurse practitioner exam, or you're studying for your internal medicine board exam, just click below and take you directly to ftplectures.com. Listen, I can't wait to help you. If you need to get in touch with me, just get to my website, be able to reach me directly, and we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Listen, you are super awesome, and my goal here is to help your dream come true. If you wanna be a doctor, wanna be a nurse practitioner, a registered nurse or physician assistant, I'm here to help you get to that next level. With your medical knowledge, let's save the world together. I love you guys. You guys are super awesome. And do not forget to click on the link below to be able to get to my website. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys have a great day. Let's go.